Hey folks, this week we're going to go over Module 4, The Revenge of the Jedi. We'll talk about that title in just a second. So Episode 6, The Universe Comes to a Close for a while. So ending the biggest cinematic trilogy of all time was never going to be easy, and any final film was likely to be somewhat of a letdown, expectations being so high. George Lucas was intent on at least making the process of making it easier than The Empire Strikes Back, which jeopardized his financial independence from Hollywood, which was always always his primary goal, by going drastically over budget, which is why he fired his original producer. Uh, he needed a producer that could keep everything on schedule, schedule, so he hired Howard Kazanjian and a director he could control, Richard Marquand, who would not be going over time and over budget, and both of which he found those. He also wanted to make the film lighter in tone, faster and more fun than Empire. This meant more spaceships, more creatures, and of course Ewoks. Uh, from a child's perspective, the final film was definitely the best on account of all the toys. Tons of toys. But whereas the second film felt like a franchise really finding its footing, Return seemed more like a return to the starstruck naivete of the first film, while utilizing a collection of plot points that don't always make a great story. Wraps everything up, Han Solo gets defrosted, Jabba and the Emperor finally make it on screen, Luke and Darth Vader battle it out again, and the Death Star gets blown up again. Everyone gets to dance with the Ewoks in a treehouse at the end of the film. Lots of spectacle, lots of jokes, a decent amount of parallel editing during the climax, but a lot of the character depth generated by Empire Strikes Back gets thrown out the window. Even Yoda only serves as an exposition delivery device. And part of this is probably due to Lucas attempting to regain control of his story and characters, which he lost a little bit on Empire, resisting any suggestions that they kill off characters or go a little darker and more ambiguous with the ending. The other part came from having a director who ended action and cut with a question mark while looking for approval from his ever-present executive producer, who was Lucas and who was always on set. But it sold a lot of tickets, and it sold a lot of toys. Uh, Skywalker Ranch was finally finished on the backs of talking Wicked e the Ewok dolls and Admiral Akbar action figures. Uh, Lucas was even able to pay his divorce settlement to Marsha without breaking up any of his companies, um, and he was finally finished. Or so he thought. So, Return of the Jedi, and I'll get to the point that it was originally called Revenge of the Jedi. So if you look at the first poster right here, the Revenge of the Jedi posters were already out. Um, we'll talk about that change, which I don't know why it happened, but it did. Um, it was directed by Richard Marquand, um, who also did um, Eye of the Needle, which is a Nazi spy movie. Um, that's pretty good. Um, he was also a really big fan of George Lucas's, which is one reason why he was made the director of this film. Uh, it was written by Lawrence Kasdan again and George Lucas. Um, its budget was $32.5 million, and it did not go over budget. Um, so obviously the producer did his job. Box office was $250 million on initial release and then $450 million all subsequent releases included. So it didn't quite make as much as um, uh, Empire. Um, all told. So the final film of the first trilogy and the last Star Wars film for 16 years, unless you count the Ewok movies and the special editions, which I strongly advise against doing. Um, it sews up the narrative into a nice, neat, happy package, uh, but it's often criticized for playing it too safe and recycling its own ideas. A second Death Star? I mean, really? Synopsis, uh, a year after the conclusion of Empire, Han Solo's friends converge on Jabba the Hutt's fortress to rescue i.e. defrost him. Meanwhile, the Empire has built a second Death Star near a forest moon populated with small furry humanoids. Luke confronts Darth Vader again to try to pull him away from the dark side of the Force, and somehow all these storylines converge into a coherent narrative and a bunch of great parallel editing where they're all doing the stuff at the same time, and then BOOM! Something happens. I'm not going to say what it is. The original title was Revenge of the Jedi, and that lasted up until five months before the film's release. So posters, trailers, t-shirts, and action figures had already gone into production, so some of them are still out there. Um, Revenge was really stuck in a lot of folks' heads when the movie hit theaters. Um, and to this day, no one really knows exactly why the title was changed. I remember in 83, we were all waiting for the movie to come out, and it's like, all right, I can't wait for Revenge of the Jedi, and then... It was Return of the Jedi, which was strange. It's like someone was playing Jedi mind tricks on us. No idea why. Um, 